They say a hard day's work never killed anyone. Well, they don't know Krishna Murti, a police captain of the Kalijodo district in Jakarta, Indonesia. Because when a high-ranking gang member is killed, leading to gang warfare, it's Krishna Murti who has to arrest those responsible and restore order. Oh, well, relax. And try not to die along the way. This is Kalijodo, an Indonesian slum where sins of every kind are supplied by business-minded gangs. But thanks to Indonesia's strict firearm control laws, one thing that's not common in Kalijodo is guns. So when a police patrol hears shots fired, their response is immediate. Whoa, relax. Relax. This is Krishna Murti, head of the patrol and a police captain of Kalijodo district. Let's just say he's having a real bad day. Saya mau ambil senjatanya. Mau saya sita. Dan itu kondisi sangat kritis. 8 orang lawan 400 orang bersenjata. Dia dengan cepat begini. Dan narik pelatuk ke kepala saya, agak jaraknya tinggal segini lah. Dia berdiri 2 meter depan saya. Bapak jangan ambil senjata saya, dia bilang. Stand down. Now lower your gun. Kalau saya hari itu saya lawan buang tembakan, saya kalah. Karena dia posisi sudah begini. Kalau saya begini kan bisa. Tapi kemudian yang terjadi adalah kerusuhan 8 lawan 400. Nah, saya termasuk saya akan mati konyol, mereka juga akan mati tembak-tembakan. Tapi itu adalah kebodohan luar biasa. Otak saya berputar bagaimana mengendalikan situasi. You know I'm the head of Kapolsek. You shoot me. I don't care. Anda boleh menodong saya, Anda boleh tembak mati saya saat ini, saya. Buat saya nggak masalah. Saya dinas, saya tugas, saya kaposek dan negara hadir karena ada peristiwa pembunuhan. Tapi jangan salah. Kalau saya mati, Anda dan keluarga Anda akan habis. Semua kali jodoh habis, Kapolda nggak akan terima. Mata saya memandang betul ke matanya dia. Kejidatnya dia saya pandang betul. Don't talk too much. The one who died is not your brother. I understand. Sebenarnya gambling juga, karena kan pelatuk sudah apa sudah ditarik. Dan kemudian dia mengatakan dia turunkan senjata. Entah karena melihat saya Kapolsek. Maaf, saya nggak kata, saya tidak tahu Bapak Kapolsek. Tapi Bapak jangan ambil senjata saya. Adik saya mati. Bagaimana ini? Saya bilang, adikmu baru mati tadi. Saya lagi cari pelakunya. Kamu sudah mau mau cari sendiri. Kamu nggak percaya saya. Berapa kali saya ungkap kasus pembunuhan? Serahkan sama saya. Dia turut. Tapi Bapak jangan ambil senjata saya. Dalam hati saya, saya akan ambil tapi besok. Pegang. Kamu kembali dengan anak buahmu. Saya akan cari pelakunya. Krishna has defused the situation, but there's a storm brewing. The brother of the dead man is Bidul, the king of Kalijodo, the godfather of the area's biggest gang. 
saya dengar Udin ini adalah dari TKP dia adiknya uh, si bos besar yang sebut saja si Bedu itu akan ada peristiwa lanjutan pasti pihak kelompok sini tidak terima terhadap kematian Udin ya, di malam itu Bedouil believes his brother has been murdered by a member of a rival gang. Hours after the incident, reports start flooding in. Bedouil is mobilizing hundreds of his men, preparing for a war of vengeance. And his rivals are preparing to defend themselves. Dampak ikutannya akan pasti. 100% akan terjadi konflik. Karena di sana kalau ada orang mati dibayar mati. Dan cara membayarnya adalah dengan membuat kerusuhan dan kerusuhan pasti dengan cara bakar dan bunuh. If Krishna can't find the murderer before Bidul makes his move, all hell will break loose. Welcome to Kali Jodo, Jakarta's infamous slum. If you're looking for some dubious recreation, you've come to the right place. Once, Kali Jodo was a place for love. Back in 18th century, at the end of 18th century, when the men in China, men came arrived in Jakarta, they've uh, started uh, this tradition or a festival involving um, young men or young women who has boats and they will travel by the riverbank. And what will happens then, um, that's where they actually find their mates. So these men would look at this woman in the different boats and they will flirt, make eye contact. And if they're interested, they will throw a little cake. Today, Kali Jodo serves up a different kind of love. It's the city's most notorious red light district, filled with pimps, prostitutes, and peddlers selling whatever customers need to have a great time. Overseeing Kali Jodo and its criminal enterprises are rival gangs. Descended from economic migrants from the 1960s and divided along ethnic lines. Jadi geng di uh, Kali Jodo itu dikuasai oleh tiga kelompok besar tergantung bosnya. Nah kalau bosnya orang kelompok uh, Makassar, Bugis, maka ini anak macan grupnya Bugis semua. Ada kelompok di Jakarta Barat, tapi berbatasannya hanya God, namanya bosnya Agus dan Riri, Agus Riri, itu orang Banten, cuma 200 orang. Tapi jangan diganggu, karena dia dari Banten, kalau dia diganggu, dalam waktu sejam dari Serang datang seribu orang. Then, there are the Tiger Sons, composed of the Mandarees from Sulawesi Island. Led by Usman, the gang is over 700 strong and ready to bust out their traditional weapons. Ini salah satu yang favorit, namanya Badi, senjatanya orang-orang uh, Makassar dan Mandar, Sulawesi Selatan. Nah, ini luar biasa ini, bacok-bacokan pakai ini, biasa. Finally, there is the gang of the Makassar people from Sulawesi Island, led by the king of Kalijodo, a man named Bidul, also known as Abdul Aziz. Ternyata ada monopoli perdagangan semua bentuk perdagangan di Kali Jodo. Kondom harus beli dari Ajis. Minuman harus beli dari Ajis. Keamanan harus dari orang dia. Kemudian suplai bedak, teh botol dan sebagainya harus dari dia. Dianya sih seperti orang baik. Kalau kita tidak paham, 
Godfather itu selalu begitu. Tapi sebenarnya dia adalah penjahat yang uh, luar biasa. The gangs are in a constant struggle for Kalejodo's lucrative criminal enterprises. Kalau anda nggak kuat, maka anda habis. They're known to be very notorious, but at the same time, these gang leaders actually provided income for the community there. Uh, they also provide protection. Uh, so if you work for me, you know, I'll give you money and I will also protect you. So in turns, of course, the people who are under their, you know, leadership would be loyal to these gangs, just like the Godfather family, really. In gang-infested Kalijodo, Hidden dangers abound. Ini sebenarnya kalau di Indonesia buat pecah es, ya. Jadi kalau ada balok es di cet 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 cet, habis itu dipecah, dijual jual, dipotong potong seperti motong roti. Tapi buat mereka ini adalah senjata efektif buat melukai lawan jarak dekat. Kalau sudah pertarungan jarak dekat atau mematikan lawan, karena di sana. Bunuh adalah barang yang biasa, selesai korbannya masukin kali, hilang. Nanti kalau mereka ketangkep alasannya, enggak pak, saya jualan es. Dianggap bukan senjata tajam. Kali Jodo is tense at the best of times. But tonight, things are even worse than usual. Bidua, the Mikasa gang's godfather, has received word that his brother has been killed. Convinced that the tiger's sons are behind the murder, he gathers his men and prepares for a bloody war of vengeance. He had a gun at the time, which when you have a gun, that even puts you in a higher ranking as a, as a leader because guns are it's not an easy object to obtain. So person who has that is actually becomes more powerful because all this time I think they use spears or machete or knife but you know Aziz got his gun he wants to kill who killed his brother um, so that's when the whole um, the huge war uh, between these two uh, gang happened as the gang war intensifies and the casualties mount the guy who's really drawn the short straw is 31-year-old Krishna Murthy, a police captain of Kali Jodo. Anggota di sekitar lokasi tempat kejadian perkara mengatakan, Pak, ada pembunuhan, Pak. Di mana? Hati saya bunyi. Lokasi? Saya katakan gitu. Anggota Kali Jodo, tap! Begitu Kali Jodo, saya sudah bilang, ini akan tidak tidur tiga hari ini. There's only one way to stop the violence, and that's to find out who killed the Godfather's brother and show that justice is being served. Now, tell me exactly what happened last night. Saya jalan bertiga sama teman saya. Jalal, Ahmad. Police question witnesses as the violence intensifies. Luckily, in a tightly packed slum like Kalijodo, everyone knows who's doing what. Three members of the Tiger's sons were walking home from a night of entertainment. A motorcyclist rode a little too close, and the gangsters snapped. Unfortunately, the man on the motorcycle was an even bigger gangster, Udin the rival godfather's brother. They apologized in a hurry, but Uden didn't let things go. Less than a hundred meters from home, Jalal found himself in trouble. Calm, calm, bro. Calm, calm. Gil. Sekarang lo tahu siapa gua. Ah! <laughs> 
When a man attacks you with a knife, you generally have two options. Udin thought Jalal had taken option A, run away. Unfortunately, he had actually taken option B. Get a bigger knife. <laughs> Krishna now knows that Jalal is behind the death of Badul's brother. He sends his men to turn Kalijodo upside down to find him. The brother of one of Kalejoto's godfathers is dead, killed by a member of a rival gang. Bidul, brother of the murdered man, has rallied his gang for revenge. One man is key to stopping the violence, the murderer, Jalal. If police can find him, arrest him, and ensure he faces justice, the Godfather might back down. Yang kedua, melakukan peredaman kepada kelompok korban supaya tidak melakukan perlawanan, tidak melakukan pembalasan, dan menyerahkan masalah ini kepada hukum. But Jalal has disappeared from Kalijodo, leaving police captain Krishna desperate to track him down. Saya sampaikan kepada anak buah saya. Kalau kita tidak tangkap pelakunya, saya mengupayakan perdamaian apapun di sini, nggak akan selesai itu cerita. Mereka yang cari. Jadi, at any price, you have to arrest Jalal. Krishna may not know where Jalal is, but he knows how he thinks. Indonesian has a strong family uh, protection that if something happened to your family, you would protect them. Uh, regardless whether they are innocent or they are not innocent at the time until it's proven otherwise, that would be the first place that they would, they would run to. Police quickly discover that although Jalal is a Mandarese, his wife's grandmother is from Banten in West Java. Discreet inquiries reveal that a man has been spotted in her house. A tactical team is sent in. With Jalal ready to run, the team moves in as quietly as possible. Jadi kami temukan dia di Banten di rumah neneknya bersembunyi ketakutan karena 
sudah pasti dia akan dikejar-kejar kelompok ini. Kami tangkap dalam kondisi baik, kami sampaikan, Anda lebih baik kami tangkap, kami bawa sekarang. Daripada Anda berkelihatan di sini, tahu-tahu mati di tebas mereka. Police now have Jalal in custody, just 48 hours after he murdered Bedul's brother, Udin. That should be enough to satisfy Bedul's thirst for vengeance and calm the violence. But Krishna has his eye on a bigger prize. Bedul himself, the biggest godfather in Kalijodo. Tapi dia pintar kan? Sebagai organized crime dia kan godfather. Godfather itu dia tidak langsung melakukan mucikarinya tidak langsung, kemudian perjudiannya tidak langsung. Ada operator-operator ya, dan dia hanya mengumpulkan. Nah saat itu kemampuan kami untuk melakukan itu kan tidak bisa harus dicari bukti. Nah, momentum yang paling tepat adalah ketika setelah peristiwa pembunuhan Udin dia melakukan penodongan dan penembakan dengan membawa senjata api ilegal itu tepat untuk menghantam dia dan menghancurkan uh, perjudian dia saat itu. Bedul itu adalah bos mafia simbol dari premanisme di situ. Kalau dia tidak ditangkap maka negara kalah sama preman. Forty-eight hours after the murder of a godfather's brother, police have captured the murderer and the godfather himself. They hope it's enough to stop the war of revenge that Bedul has started. But it's already too late. Because they had, a, they had put the gang member, obviously, into the police station. But we were just going to fight because it is like already anger and, you know, revenge and you hurting, you know, my leader. It was one of the biggest war and it caught a lot of media attention and so it burnt houses. There was about 225 houses at the time was burnt. Police mobilize units to quell the violence, but a lasting peace seems out of reach. It all comes down to the trickle-down effect of Kalejoro's economy. The gangs and their criminal activities are what keep the locals in business. When customers arrive seeking pleasure from gambling dens, drug pushers and brothels, locals stand ready to sell them refreshments, condoms and aphrodisiacs of dubious quality. Destroying Kalijoto's criminal enterprises would strangle the gang's finances, limiting their ability to fund a gang war. But with everyone in Kalijoto wanting to keep the crime going and the money flowing, the war rages on. This is Gali Jodo, possibly the wealthiest slum you've ever seen. It's a lucrative business, what uh, Kali Jodo offers. Prostitution, sort of gambling. I mean, some of the largest gambling uh, business is actually in, in Kali Jodo. Hitungan angka saya itu 1 miliar, 2 miliar. Tiga miliar kita tidak pernah tahu. Karena orang buang uang seratus ribu sejuta kalah sepuluh juta kata kalah seratus juta sehari biasa di situ. On a bad day, a brothel 
could actually generate just six million on a bad day. The secret to Kali Jodo's success is crime. Brothels, drug pushers, and gambling dens paying the bills for everyone from top to bottom. Even the poorest people can make money in Kali Jodo. Uh, you know, they can work as uh, they sell condoms or herbal medicines. Basically, everybody from a gang leader or to, you know, someone who just you know, drive people with their bike, they could be domestic workers. There is actually lots and lots of jobs there and Kali Jodo probably create income uh, like over one billion rupiah per day. At the bottom, locals hawk refreshments, condoms and aphrodisiacs of dubious quality. At the top are the godfathers who control the illegal businesses and grow fat off the proceeds. Even the police get a slice of the good times, courtesy of the business-minded godfathers. In fact, Kali Jodo was known as the ATM because any police officer could stop by and get a bribe. Di situ ada pos. Mobil patroli lewat, orang turun, balik lagi, jalan. Motor patroli lewat, orang polisinya turun, balik lagi jalan. Itu bukan polisi. Pemda, Polda, Polres, TNI. Dulu itu seperti itu. Terus, apa yang mereka dapat? 5.000, 10.000. Seperti pengemis. Kemudian, yang lucu, itu yang bagian bagi-bagi itu. Dia tahu bednya polisi. Kalau polisi Jakarta Barat ngambil di wilayah Jakarta Utara, dia bilang, Bapak bukan dari Jakarta Utara, Bapak Jakarta Barat, ambilnya di sana. <laughs> Jadi mereka bisa ngatur. But the good times are coming to an end. In 2001, there's a new man in town, 31-year-old Krishna Murthy, a district police captain. He himself was tested, was also, you know, uh, was given the opportunity to also take bribes from this gang. It was offered by the, the gangs um, to receive money to kind of like sweep this under the carpet. Hello, Mr. Krishna. I don't wanna waste your time, but here, something for your family. It's a little gift. Please take it. Take your money. I don't think you heard me. That kind of brought a, a sense of, you know, sh culture shock, I guess, from the gangsters where all this time they were able to bribe, the police would, you know, close, you know, one eye to whatever event was happening and he, they couldn't do it with him. Krishna's refusal to take bribes gives him the moral authority to order his men to stop. Saya katakan apa kata, kalau mereka kasih uang sama anda, jangan pikir mereka baik. Mereka bisa cari duit karena kita tidak melakukan apa-apa. Kita yang baik. Kalau gitu hentikan, matikan mereka. Supaya orang rakyat bilang kita yang hebat. Begitu kita pembiaran, dia jadi besar, dibagi receh-receh. Terus anggota bilang, bos baik, bos baik. Kan sebenarnya dia penjahat.
I'm very disappointed. Is this who we are? Hmm? Ini bukan polisi. Negara tidak adil. Setelah dia pergi, saya bilang sama anggota saya, tidak boleh ada lagi yang bisa menguasai kali judo kecuali kita. Habisi kali judo. Anggota bingung. Karena itu salah satu makanan mereka kan. Maka saya larang anggota untuk dikuasai oleh mereka. Karena kekuatan kan. Police will no longer take money to turn a blind eye to what's happening. So a year later, when the murder of a godfather's brother sparks a gang war, murderer and godfather find themselves arrested. Their bribes ineffective. But the war doesn't stop. And with local police vastly outnumbered, their hands seem tied. It had a lot of media attention because it happened for several months. It's one of the biggest uh, fight. Uh, 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 potentially, this could call, cause a civil war if, the, if Krishnamurti at the time didn't make a strategic uh, solution. Nobody has been able to achieve lasting peace in Kali Jodo. People uh, want to protect. Uh, Kali Jodo because it's everybody's business there from the you know the lowest to the higher ranks or the gangs uh, everybody can earn money in Kali Jodo. But the continuing gang war is bad for business violence keeps customers away. When there's no prostitution or there's no gambling and it's closed down there's no money people couldn't sell whatever it is they were selling. It affect a lot of the economy in, in, in Kali Jodo as well. So it was, it was a, a huge impact on the community. When livelihoods are affected, the gangs start to lose the local community's support. Meanwhile, Jakarta's governor is fed up with the violence. The city sends support and riot control police. Backed by support from Jakarta's governor, it's time to strike back. So I need three things from you. One, show your strength. Two, prove your teamwork. And three, protect our civilians. Understood? Yes, sir! Good. Krishna Murti, a police captain of the Kali Jodo district, is on a mission to take it back from its gang lords. A high profile gang war has convinced Jakarta's governor that the slum must be destroyed. Opposing him are Kali Jodo's gangs, an ill disciplined rabble with murderous melee weapons. Ini uh, kalau di Madura namanya celurit, kalau bahasa Indonesia namanya arit. Dulu gunanya untuk motong rumput, tapi kemudian berkembang menjadi senjata untuk berperang. Kelebihannya kalau nusuk dia langsung mematikan dibanding pisau. Kalau pisau belum tentu mati, kenapa dia langsung mematikan? 
robek semua organ tubuhnya. The gangs carry secret blades. Ini ada senjata lagi kecil. Kelebihannya dia bisa dipinggang. Karena mereka kan nggak bisa punya pistol. Pistol kan ilegal. Uh, sebenarnya senjata ini kalau diteteng-teteng juga ilegal, tapi lebih sulit mendapatkan pistol karena itu mereka pakai ini, dia ada covernya supaya kalau dimasukkan di pinggang, ya ini masukkan di pinggang, tidak melukai mereka, tidak melukai mereka. Kemudian kalau mereka mau melakukan cabut, nah ini tajamnya. They even have ranged weapon support. Jadi ini adalah peralatan salah satu peralatan yang digunakan oleh mereka untuk ketika terjadi pertarungan antar geng. Jadi nanti kalau terjadi konflik, perang anak panah terjadi di antara mereka, sekali berjatuhan korban itu seperti film-film uh, kolosal zaman dulu, 13, 15, 20 dibawa ke rumah sakit dengan tusukan di sini, di mata, di mana-mana, termasuk anggota yang mengamankan. Jadi padahal Ini peralatannya seperti ini. Ini ada uh, semacam mata ikan. Ini aero, uh, aeronya seperti ini. Ada buntutnya supaya membuat mereka stabil. Mata ikan ini berguna untuk mengkaitkan dengan kawat yang disambungkan dengan slingshot atau dengan uh, rubbernya, karetnya. Jadi nanti caranya adalah Mereka melakukan ini ditarik, ditembakkan ke arah lawan, ya, tarik dan ini jarak jangkauannya bisa 100 meter, ya, 50 meter, efektif 25 meter. Police have activated Sabara unit, the first dispatch for riot control. They turn up in Kevlar armor, as strong as steel but five times lighter with protection for vulnerable areas like their eyes and backs of necks. They approach the riot location, banging their shields to intimidate. A shield wall pushes the rioters back. Officers following behind make arrests. Saya ketemu ratusan senjata, 299 orang saya ambil. I don't think it's ever been where a police in such a scale have to move in into Kali Jodo and um, basically they were ready to demolish Kali Jodo. They had excavators, you know, and there were uh, there were prostitutes were protesting naked. Itu seribu orang dari Polda, saya menghubungi Bapak Kapolda untuk datang ke Kali Jodo. Dan hari itu minggu pagi saya red habis kali Jodo. Kemudian kami berbicara dengan Bapak Gubernur dan didukung. Di berantas itu, pinggir sungai, dihabisi rumah-rumahnya, dirontokkan rumah-rumahnya itu. Sehingga kali Jodo yang tadinya tertutup seperti lorong, agak terbuka dengan dalih untuk bantaran sungai. Kali Jodo's godfathers are desperate. People have turned against them. Foot soldiers have been arrested, and businesses they've been fighting over have been destroyed. So when Krishna summons them to the police station, they come. Even Badul is given a day out of jail. Krishna offers them a way out, a peace treaty. No more gambling dens, no more weapons, no more violence. With the gangs organized along ethnic lines, he appeals to their ethnic pride. Jadi saya aja bicara, oke okay, saya mau bantu pak, jangan sampai ada kesan orang kami suka bertengkar, suka kelai. Dihubungi mereka, suruh rukun, suruh stop dan sebagainya. Didudukan, mereka hubungan dulu, didudukan, kemudian terjadi persiapan perjanjian. Musik 
On the 8th of May, 2002, with police as witnesses, the rival gangs agree to set their differences aside. The peace treaty is sealed by the handing over of over 300 weapons. Yang Yusman berhenti keluar dari kali judi. Yang Ajis tutup judi, dia terseok-seok awalnya. Uh, kemudian kafe saja dia. Tentunya drastis penurunannya. Premanya pelan-pelan kembali ke tanah asal dan mungkin mencari pekerjaan lain. Kan mereka sebenarnya orang yang survive ya. Mereka bekerja jadi pelaut, jadi nelayan. Karena di sebelah utaranya itu kan ada Muara Angke, Muara Baru, Sunda Kelapa, Tanjung Priok itu lokasi buat cari makan yang jual ikan, jual apa saja mereka bisa lakukan. Di Jakarta apa saja asal mau bernapas dan bergerak jadi uang. Dan ada kebahagiaan sebagai polisi yang cita-cita sucinya kan menciptakan kedamaian, menciptakan rasa aman itu luar biasa. From the murder of a godfather's brother, the seemingly impossible has been achieved. Peace in Kali Jodo. Thank you.